So guys, I'm in Orange County, California, waiting to help a family who desperately need my help. Let's take a look. Hi, we're the Beck family from Orange, California. I'm Nicole. And I'm Nate. We have three kids. Hunter, who's nine. Pearson, who's five. And Bronson, who's three. Minute! Shut up. I'm a home theater installer. I'm a full-time fashion design student. Be good for daddy, okay? And I work part-time in the evenings at a local coffee house. Going to school full-time and being a mom full-time and working. I'd right, be good, okay? Sometimes feels just really overwhelming for me. Okay. I'll basically get home from work and I have the kids to myself. Ah, <laughs> oh, I get it. Tag team parenting. Would you like orange juice or milk? No! Ah! Bronson is the most difficult child for our family. Sit down, please. He doesn't get his way. He's looking to hit you, shout out a bad word. Hit it! Ah! Look at me. No! No! Put your hand down. You don't want Pearson's biggest issue is his uh, stubbornness. Hey, stop. I mean, stop. No! If you're asking him to do something that is not what he wants to do. You want to sit down and get it done? Do your homework. He will not do it. You ready to do your homework? <laughs> Take out your homework so I can check it. When Hunter was eight, he was diagnosed with uh, ADHD. Have you done 350? It's difficult for him to sit still and get his homework done. You only had math homework today. Yeah. Saying that he's completed everything for the day, which isn't always true. So if I talk to your teacher, she's going to say, yes, I already have Hunter's completed math homework. So it's been really difficult. <laughs> the discipline will range from yelling. You cannot play with him. You understand. Penalty box. Penalty. You're gonna be a penalty box. After your penalty. Our penalty box is our timeout area. You cannot cry. Stop yelling. Sit here quietly. It's not effective and it seems to be a waste of time and really escalate the situation. I mean, I can see that they're trying with their discipline. You can sit in there five minutes or we can go for six minutes. But they're not getting it right and that's why it's not working. Thank you for sitting down. <laughs> I don't want to feel like, oh, I'd, I'd much rather be at work than home. Park it, now. I'm always anxious. I'm always waiting for the next fight to break out. And it just wears me down mentally and physically and emotionally. Please come help us, Super Nanny. We're at our wit's end and don't know what else to do and who to turn to. And we really need help to save our family. OK, Mom and Dad, I know you're at your wit's end, but if you just hang on a little bit longer, I'll be there soon. Hi, how are you? Hi, very well. Pleased to meet you, Jeff Ross. Nicole Beck. Having Joe in my house feels surreal. I felt a little vulnerable. So what's your name? Frost. Frost, hi, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Joe Frost, Pearson Beck. How are you doing, Hunter? After greeting the family, I took a tour around the house. I saw that the master bedroom is a true reflection of where this family are at. A messy place. Is this where you sleep? Yes. Right. Oh dear girl, you've got some tidying up to do, haven't you? Oh, lots of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been like the last room on the list. Who did all the artwork on the wall there? Bronson, was that some of your handiwork down here? That's Bronson's, is it? Come and show me your artwork. What did you do? Which one did you do? Like, right there. Is that pink one yours? Is it? What about you, Hunter? Where's your Picasso? They then started to brag about their own artwork. Well, I did that one with the red pen, and um, yeah, it was me that did the one with the blue pen. What are these parents thinking? allowing their kids to draw on the walls and the furniture. <laughs> hey, the bats were hitting a ball, not your brother. Sorry. Nobody's for hitting. The ball is for hitting, OK? As I continue to observe this family, I saw that the younger son, Bronson, is quite aggressive. <laughs> I wondered if there was more to it, so I questioned Mum about it. He had um, a few incidences one week at school where he was aggressive toward a staff member and threatened to pick up like a small children's chair and throw it. And so at that point, he was asked to leave the program. How long has he been suspended for? Um, he, indefinitely from that particular preschool. Bronson's nursery school has expelled him. It's a real shame, but I know that I can help him. And then mum went on to tell me about Bronson's speech difficulties. The problems like just with um, a slurring sound and help with the SH sound on a lot of words. Just as of recently, 
things. I wonder if Bronson's aggression comes from not being able to communicate clearly with his parents. Although later on, he was very clear in his communication. You don't talk to mommy like that, and those words are yucky, dirty words. Mum put Bronson into a penalty box. Their time out. I'm not getting up. But then it got up. <laughs> okay. I hate you, stupid nanny. You need to sit here quietly. Back and forth, back and forth. And then we saw Bronson run out of the door. The street is right there. You're not to go this way. That is not safe. Look at all these cars, OK? He came so close to that main road that it was frightening. Quite frankly, I'm not taking no chances. I'm taking my shoes off. In case I've got to run out myself. <laughs> my Let me see your arm. My arm is a stupid Okay. <laughs> like... Having Bronson call Super Nanny and other swear words, I felt mortified. Milk or water? And just when we thought it was over, he took a break for it again and grabbed a scooter. Stop on your scooter now. Once again, Bronson broke out of his timeout and he was heading towards the traffic. But this time, he was on a scooter, giving his mum a challenge to catch up with him. You are not to come out of the house, OK? You're to sit down in penalty and have... How many times is this child going to run out of the house and are we going to be lucky because he's not been hit by a car? I mean, at that point, you realise there can't be any more timeouts. So I'm actually going to make a decision here on observation. Okay. You're going to forget about timeout with him today because I've seen how you handle timeout. Okay. When Joe had me stop putting Bronson in the penalty box, I felt like a failure. Okay. But let's take away this situation right now because okay. it's too dangerous, okay. far too dangerous. Later on, Mum sat down with Hunter to do homework. He is a boy who has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, so I was very interested to see exactly how she would handle this situation. I'm not gonna read, I'm asking you. What's the first question? Say. It doesn't say? What does it mean? I read how you I said read me what the first question is. What do we need there to find out? No What's questions. the first bit of information? What do you need to list first, Hunter? I don't know. Am I acting like that with you? you? I'm sitting here offering help, okay? Mum felt like she was listening to him, but he was like, I need help, and she's like, I'm helping you. What's it asking you to do first? So really, they weren't achieving anything. Nothing productive was being done. What are we doing? It's not it. I could see that Mum's life right now is completely exhausting for her. I did have a chance to talk to her on the front lawn, and she's paying a high emotional price for this. So you go to school all day, then you come back and then you go to work all evening. Right. Of course, there's a house to be run, so who does that? Right. Um, when I'm not here, um, it's my husband, Nate. And significantly, have you seen change in the children's behaviour? Absolutely. And yourself since you took on more? Yes. At first, I thought it would be really manageable and that I could do it and do it well. But as time's gone on, little things have started to give. It's frustrating. It's, I don't feel like myself. And, you know, with the kids, it's like, it's just a lot, so. And personally, does that bring on mood swings and irritability? And um, that's hard, you know. It's like you have to be the best person for yourself in order to be the best for them. And like, this is the most important job I have is their mom. And right now, I feel like I'm just setting them up for failure. Mom's dealing with work, family, school, with so many commitments. She's hanging on the edge. It's not going to be long before she ends up falling off. As we finished our talk, Dad arrived home. This is my husband, Nate. Yeah, this is. Hi, Nate. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Joe Nice Frost. to meet you. And just like millions of other American homes, it was time for a shift change. With Mum heading off to work, Dad started to get dinner ready. I did that one. Yeah, uh, you know what? This one will work. Uh, yeah. But Bronson started again. Well, am I going to eat in the air? Yeah. Am I going to eat in the air? Oh, who'd you hit? <laughs> yeah, are we allowed to? No. What's the rule? Shoot. What's the rule? It is 
Yep, exactly. I had a time. Stop talking. Every time Bronson opened his mouth, he had another three minutes, another three minutes. I mean, we were watching the penalty box with Bronson in it for over 45 minutes, which was absurd, really. I mean, this is a boy who's three years old. Should have taken three minutes. After Bronson's timeout, Dad was just able to enjoy the evening. Mum and Dad are a decent couple. They've just got some serious challenges at the moment. They've got a boy who's got learning difficulties, another one who doesn't listen, and a three-year-old who's just been expelled from school. And they need a little bit of help. It's been great, actually, to watch you tonight with the boys. Okay. What I am looking forward to tomorrow is actually sitting down and having a family meeting. I'm really looking happen. forward to it. I'm definitely you know, anxious for you know to hear what Joe has to say, both nervousness and excitement. I love the fact that you guys are very enthusiastic with your family. You certainly want the best. The problem is, it's all out of balance. Very much so. Let's talk about something very pressing, and that's safety. Yesterday, I told you, let's not do timeout. Right. For me to say that, that's pretty big, <laughs> because timeout's necessary. Right. If you know me, you know you need consequences and discipline. But when I was faced with little Bronson running out, and yesterday, he was extremely close to that main road out there. That was seriously dangerous. Isn't an excuse, but in Bronson, typically, he hasn't gone that way. And then, you know, he'll get a smack on his bottom, and I'll tell him, you cannot, in a big voice, you know, you cannot cross, you know. But it's, it's, it's how you're saying it. You don't have to be aggressive, you have to be assertive. You have to recognize that that's a danger zone and by no means is that acceptable. They need to be able to listen to you, but they don't. And the reason they don't is discipline. It's a bit of a muck up, isn't it, discipline? Yes. I'm here to set the record straight of why your penalty box isn't working. You guys do not give your children a warning, so you never allow them to think for themselves and to make choices for themselves that then allow them to be accountable for their consequences. Yeah, and that's made, yeah, that makes a lot better sense. The second situation here is that when they're in the penalty box, if they just move an inch out of the little square that you give them, you place them back. So, of course, the time escalates again and escalates again. So you guys go around in circles to the point that you then become inconsistent. And when you're inconsistent, the message the boys get, today you may stick to your guns, tomorrow you might not. So we do need to tweak the discipline, and we'll do that with your penalty box because it's there and it's in place, but we'll use it properly. So let's talk about homework, because homework's like a big black cloud in this house. It rains every day when it comes to homework. We're dealing with Hunter, who you've told me has been diagnosed with ADHD. So you know that, but you get agitated, you get frustrated. He needs a mature parent around. I mean, yesterday, listening to you at the table, and I, go, I do help you. What do you mean I don't help you? You know, I, it's, it's not about that. It's about what can I do to help? I'm all about getting busy and doing some work. But obviously, I can't do it by myself. I need two parents who are willing to put that work in. So do I have two guys on board? Oh, yeah. All right, because you've got three children that desperately need it. Definitely. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. First thing that this family needs is some house rules. So I'm going to bring that in to put everybody on the same page. Rules and perks. What are house rules? Perks are the things you're going to get to do when you behave and you show what good boys you are. These kids know what they shouldn't be doing. But when you don't have parents that hold that picket line in place, they kick it down. So what could be some rules? What are some things that need to be able to yeah, listening? Listen. listening. Okay. No hitting. No hitting. That's a good one right there. I like that one. There's never been really a set of rules in the house. Okay. If you no. hit, you sit. So doing that together was really, I think, meaningful for the kids. What are things that you'd love, you guys would like to do? Go to the park. Go to the park. That's a great one. I think all three boys definitely understood that if you follow all the rules, you, you do get a perk. But you didn't get ice cream. 
Take a bite right to get ice cream. I think that's a good idea. Bite right and an ice cream. Tell you, yeah. I think it was a good idea because we get more treats. Dad put the rules up on the wall so everybody could see them. And of course, we got a chance to test it quickly. No, no. We do not hit. We do not hit. Can you read this for me? I want you to read this for me right here. I hate the house of rules because I don't like literally. What's the very first one, Pearson? Are we allowed to hit? We do not hit. It seemed like everybody was making good use of that board. So whilst Dad went off to work, I got on with the next technique. Now, they... Now he just hit me, so... Correct. Okay. And you will say to him that if he wants to sit up there and watch what you're doing, he can. OK. Or he can go and play, but you don't want the hitting. OK. If you would like to sit on the counter next to Mommy and JoJo and watch, then you can. Or you can go play Play-Doh in the other room. But Bronson had his own agenda for us. Once in a while, they'll buy lunch, but typically they bring their lunch to school. Do you... He's going through the motions with you because he wants to see what you're going to do next. Okay. You'll give him a warning for his behaviour. Stop spitting at Mommy or you will go into the penalty box. All right, stand up. I don't like being in What you're going to do is to place him into the penalty box, OK, and you're going to tell him why he's there. Ah! You're then going to ignore him completely and you're going to set the alarm for three minutes, OK? okay. You're sitting in here for hitting and spitting at Mommy and you're going to sit down. Oh, that voice is not good enough. Oh, no. This is what I'm talking about, okay. this voice. You're sitting in penalty box for spitting and hitting mommy, and that's not acceptable. And you're gonna sit down no! three minutes and not Stupid. get up. Ignore the profanity, don't even worry about that. It's okay. all for a reaction. Kids use bad language to get a rise out of the parents. So the quickest way to eliminate that is to ignore it. He got up from that penalty box over 25 times. Bronson's most challenging with timeouts because he's continuously getting up and running in all different directions, and he can outlast me. Yeah. You're responding to his naughty behaviour, but you're not reacting to his outbursts of profanity. OK. It wouldn't be the first time that I've heard children swear at me and call me every name under the sun, and I'm sure it won't be the last either. Bronson felt very threatened having Joe in the house and helping me with the penalty box. It was challenging. But she followed through, and eventually she got to the bottom of it where he had to do his time. Mommy put you in penalty time for hitting and spitting at Mommy. You need to tell Mommy you're sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. It was really a challenge for me, but when it was all said and done, it was a big relief. Come outside. When Dad got home, I wanted to discuss a very serious situation with him and Mum. I mean, when you've got kids running near a road, you need a lookout, and so I need to put safety measures into this house. Every day when you come out to play, Mum and Dad are going to show you where you can go up to by using this ribbon. Know this, boys. If you go past the ribbon, you will do time out. These kids have got to recognise that there are certain boundaries in which they can play in. So you have to stay, but anything beyond that is going to be unsafe for them. And it's the parents' responsibility to make sure these kids understand that. You're taking ownership now of okay. this. Thank you. Right. It's going to be tough at first. So let's do this. But I think it'll work out well. All right, come on my side, Bronson. Come back over here. The biggest concern I have with Bronson is that he would be hit by a car. Ready? So I was really excited to have the safety boundaries started this afternoon with the kids. So where do you guys get to play? Let's look at the ribbon. I don't like the orange ribbons because if we pass them, we go in penalty. And they're dumb. As it works out, Hunter and Pearson were very cooperative. But that left Bronson. Bronson! As soon as the ribbons were placed on the trees, Bronson got in his little tricycle and went totally over the ribbon going to penalty because you went past that marker. I think he was a little bit shocked that he was pulled off his bike and marched into the house for penalty box. Bronson, we just set up those markers. Bronson's going to disrespect every new thing that's put in place, but it's also quite natural for a child of his age to do that. 
if he gets up from the dishwasher door, because that's what the penalty box is, you'll place him back without talking to him, okay? This was the first time that I'd done a time out with Dad, so I wanted to make sure that he got the steps right. A -A -E -E. Ah! If you are going to just see if he's still in the same space, don't look at him, but just walk past him so you can see whether he's there or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, another thing would be, being that he's sitting there and he is, he's still talking and all that, does... Just ignore it. Okay. That's what adds you in the first place. Okay. Bronson did his time and Dad did the final steps. Do you know why you're in here? I passed the ribbon. Can exactly. You? you passed the ribbon. What do you say? Dad did a fantastic timeout, and then he took Bronson outside to try all over again. Look, look, you see the ribbon? Where's the other ribbon? Over there. We have to stay in between the two. I think it's teaching him that it's not a game. You know, this is for his safety. Give me a high five. Let's go have fun. You know, you're not listening. You could get killed. On my second day with this family, I wanted to address the boys drawing all over the walls. You see this table here? So I've created this space for them to be artistic and stop the vandalism. And then it was time for me to move on to more important factors. Next, what I really want to do is concentrate on Hunter's homework. He has ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and it can be very challenging for him to focus at any length of time, which creates a lot of frustration between himself and his parents. All right, Hunter, this is what I've got here. OK, homework tips. Guess who they're for? Mm. No, Mum and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen and be patient. Ask what you can do to help. Not a praise for what a good job. What do you think about those, Hunter? You think Mum and Dad need them? Yeah, give me five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hunter was so excited that, you know, we had homework tips, too. So whilst I went into the living room to play with Bronson, Dad sat down to do a math assignment with Hunter. I actually thought it would go pretty easy, considering the tips were right in front of him. Which one's higher, 2.6 or 2.5? This one is higher. 2.5. 7 is wrong, and I want you to tell me why after we, you seven redo eight, this. Seven, seven, is seven, 7 is wrong. 8 is wrong. Pay attention to me, please, because this is, this, is, this is what you don't understand. Yes, I do. This? Dad was already forgetting the first tip to be patient, and he and Hunter were getting more and more frustrated. I didn't know about that. Hold on, you're, now you're arguing. Would you like to sit in timeout? No, this is your final warning. Jealous. This is your final warning. This is, no, I'm no. going to correct him. You're ripping my paper. No, I'm not moving your paper. You're moving it. I'm not moving my hand. You're trying Look to right grab there. it. See, that's what you did. Come on, let's go. No. Yes, no. let's go. Let's no. go. Let me do my homework. Let's go. Let me do Let's my go. Homework. Not only did Dad lose his patience, but he escalated the problem by placing Hunter into a penalty box. Dad really needs to understand how difficult it is for Hunter because he's got ADHD. And quite frankly, I think he overreacted. I do need to step back in. In this particular circumstance, this would have been about giving him space to just call off. OK, because at this stage, you both are feeling agitated. This is a no-win situation here. Mm -hmm. and we want to win-win always. After our little chat right. in the kitchen, I saw a marked difference in Dad and a different response from Hunter. Let me have you tell me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> the homework tips definitely help you with, with a, a child with ADHD. Be patient. That's the number one thing. OK, we got 2.3. And then 2.9 2. 2. 9 is the next one. Now Dad was concentrating on the tips, it was helping Hunter to stay focused on his homework. 3.2 and 3.5. Everything is perfect on that one right there, OK? At first, my dad didn't listen when I was doing my homework, and then he wouldn't be patient. Zero. Because that's a zero, and that's the last one, that's an eight. Perfect. I showed him what to do, so then he was listening and being patient. That's it, dude. Done? Done. Well done, the pair of y'all, seriously. <laughs> Later on in the afternoon, Bronson started to play up again. <laughs> his inability to communicate with his parents to the point where they understand him is creating these meltdowns. 
And really, Mum needs to understand that. Hold on a minute, because he's talking to you. Okay. okay. Come down. Right. When he's shouting, just come down and listen to him. Okay. When you don't understand what he's saying, just tell him that I don't understand you. I can hear you. And that way we can get him to start talking. More. Engage in that conversation. Yeah, when because hurt. when he feels like he's ignored, it yes. freaks him out. Okay. I really wanted Mum to recognise the importance of spending time with him. Did he do that? I'm really doing all the things that are key to his early development. This little one needs time. Okay. And just sitting down and having a conversation and having him watch your mouth. I believe that a lot of Bronson's aggression comes from the fact that his parents don't understand what he's saying and he gets frustrated. Jojo's T-shirt is what colour? Wow. It's red. His speech is slightly delayed. His pronunciation is not as good as what it could be. And your T-shirt is what colour? Blue. Blue. B. B. Eye contact and being repetitive with your vocabulary. That's the only way, really, that we see children enhance in their vocabulary and speech. Old McDonald's. I'm a wag, wag, wag. Oh, old McDonald's. Oh, old McDonald's. You said old. Old McDonald's. I'm a wag, wag, Watch JoJo's mouth. Old. You say old. It was really interesting when Joe and Bronson were working together that he placed his hand over her mouth. Old. Good boy. Mac. Mac. Donald. Donald. Yes! Yes! That moment for me was, was very special. Oh, you need to be doing this. You know, you see what this young boy is capable of doing if the parents only just put that time in. That's, that's precious. Watch JoJo's mouth. Three. Joe made a correlation between Bronson's aggression and his speech development. So that's been, you know, a big eye opener for us. Three. You say three. We could understand what he was trying to say. It made me feel really good, and I know it did to him too. Five. Five. Give me five. Right on. I'm going for several days. I'm leaving you guys to remember the techniques that have been put in place. They've had me around supporting them, but this is about them supporting each other now and doing it on their own. Follow through with the penalty box. Okay. Boundaries outside. Homework tips are a must. I think I'm most nervous um, having Joe gone with Bronson and having to deal with him. Bye, Joe. Bye. -bye. Bye. Seeing Joe walk out the door was a little bit scary, and I feel unsure of you know the next few days. How are you? Very well, thank you. I've been away from the Beck family now for several days. I really hope that they kept themselves on track. OK, so are we ready to take a look at this DVD? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? I the bell right here. No. Oh, we don't hit and then say sorry. Bronson, you need to come here. You're past your boundary. No, that is not acceptable, ever. You're going to the penalty box. <laughs> Let's just go back a bit when he dropped the grapes. You could actually say, we don't have to hit. It's not necessary to hit, OK? If you're angry because that's happened, we don't have to hit, OK? Just apologise, please. OK. So then he doesn't feel like, oh, you're going to tell him off, what are you going to do? And then he goes off, and then he runs off, and then you're having to chase him. Hunter's homework. You doing math first? OK. So we already know what that decimal is, right? So what is this decimal? 1.9. OK, yeah. write it down. I want to keep them a little bit more spaced apart, OK? Two, so we... four, five, six. Yeah, there you go. Don't get down on yourself, OK? It was a mistake. It's fine. And the man with Hunter was who? The man. <laughs> was that you? It was. Oh, that was? It was. <laughs> Seriously, when you decided, I'm going to read and take in those tips, 
Look at the difference. We go through them every every day. I'll, you know, we, we set those rules up there. And Hunter brings them to the table with Hunter, his materials, and he sets it right up where and, we sit. And so I just kind of mm -hmm. go through them every time. I, He's like, yeah. Dad, I need you right. to read these and stick to them because that's how you help me. Right. Yeah. Beautiful to see. Bronson's speech. One. Say it. One. And then two. Three. What is this? A fork. Fork. Good job. What is this? A spoon. Spoon. What color is this one? Yellow. Yellow. No, dude! Oh, here's You're some so tricky ones. Doing well. Yeah. You're doing so well. I love it. So good to see. Good. What was different about yourself when doing speech with Bronson? Well, I took the, the time to, you know, uninterrupted with patience. You didn't get angry with him. You can't teach that way. And so you were more composed. Your whole attitude was very, very different. Wonderful piece of footage, it really is. Those are couch pillows, and they don't belong on mommy's bed. Out of my room and get the pillows off. Put these on the couch, you can do that. Off the bed. Put these back on the couch. Pearson, you can come here and put these back on the couch like I asked. You need to put those pillows back on the couch. Okay, I asked you to put them back on the couch. You need to put those pillows. This is your warning. Okay. You need to put the pillows back on the couch. Okay, so you're asking Pierce here to put the pillows on the couch. Mm -hmm. You're giving these kids instruction to do certain things. You're not giving them a chance to do it. Okay. A couple of times you ask, step back. And then comes the warning. Yeah. Then, okay. There are things that we do need to knuckle down and do this afternoon. Mum needs more work on clearly giving these kids instruction rather than snapping commands. And certainly Bronson needs help with learning to talk more so that he doesn't become so aggressive. They're not out the woods yet. There's a section on the DVD that shows mum repetitively asking the children to do the same thing over and over again. Put these on the couch. Put these back on the couch. Put those pillows back on the couch. She doesn't actually leave any time for them to get the job done. No more hot air. Good. So today I went in with an exercise shaped like a hot air balloon to show her that enough of that now. Say, so, whatever it is that you need. OK. Walk away. Now the chance to be able to do it. If you see it's not done, then put technique in play. Okay. If the child decides to ignore mum, then she can give a warning and ultimately a discipline if necessary. If you have to repeat yourself, know that it's more direction. And if it's where you need to put a technique in play, trust me, it'll probably be a warning. Right. I didn't realise how often I ask the kids to do something and that the kids aren't even listening at all. No more eight, nine, ten times. Right. So I thought there's a lot of changes need to be made on my part to ensure that, you know, they actually listen actively. You need to take your cup and your spoon over there and take it to the kitchen sink and put it in there for me, please. When you do step back, you basically give your kids a chance to do what they've been asked. I'd like for you to go in the kitchen and put the step stool over by the dryer for me, please. Hey, Bronson, you need to put this in the kitchen on the table for me because I need to clean it later. No! It was going pretty smoothly until Bronson decided to rebel. I got it. Pearson stepped in to help. OK, so take it back out again. And I needed to remind Mum who she'd asked to help. Bronson, Mommy asked you to put this in the kitchen so that I could clean it. This is your warning. I'm going to just make it like my mantra. Say, walk away, and put the technique in play. I'm looking forward to just keeping that in mind and making a lot of progress. High five. Good job. Mm, I love you. Hi, we want to I can't hear you when you're shouting. I can't understand you when you're Please shouting. Help me with Pippi's Sure, I can help you stand at Pippi's Fine. Okay. A lot of Bronson's aggression comes from his inability to communicate clearly. And when Bronson and Pearson started to fight over the drinking cups, I got a chance to show Mum and Dad how to deal with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, what's I going on? I I got blue and then he just takes it. Who got him out? Me. Now ask 
ask Bronson what happened. Bronson, what happened? You can use his words. Got him out. I got him out. You got him out? And then you're telling me you got him out, huh? Are you sure you got him out? I, I, when I got him out, I say I want blue, and he takes blue. What's normally the rule on who gets him out? They get a pick. Look at the difference. Pierce would have been the first to talk, and you'd have been all ears. And nobody would have given Bronson a chance. Because you know what? Bronson weren't really talking much, and we just thought, well, we'll leave him there. We won't even ask. See, now you're giving Bronson a chance to talk. And so there's not this anger, and you hear both sides, which is what you're supposed to be doing. There you go. With Bronson, he has shown improvement with his anger and aggression, and really with his verbal communication. He can talk things through, and he does not have to always, you know, feel like he has to hit somebody or throw something or have this big meltdown. I told you it's time to come in. So we're going to go inside, or you're going to go into a timeout. Bronson may still act out every now and then, but if he continues to communicate clearly, Bronson's going to be more receptive to discipline, and his parents got a good chance to see that. I put you in penalty because you went outside your, your area where you're allowed to go, your visual boundaries. You're now going to be in here for three minutes. Yeah. Bronson got up once, which is absolutely brilliant. I mean, we have seen Bronson get up so many times, I've lost count. So to see him go back once and then actually do his time was a big deal today. I put you in the penalty box because you went outside your visual boundary. And I told you to come inside and you continued to run off. When we first started the our timeouts with Joe, they were lasting you know, upwards of 40 minutes. And to have you know, today's time out, you know, be under six minutes, it's awesome. Tell Daddy you're sorry. Sorry. Now give me some kisses and hugs. With the improvements that I've seen with Bronson, I look forward to the next few months really getting him prepared and his aggression under control so that when fall rolls around, he'll be ready to go into a preschool that's a great fit for him and he can really shine there as well as he's going to do at home. because Jojo wants to give you all a big hug what? because I'm going home now. <laughs> the Beck family have an older child who's got ADHD, a younger child who certainly had delay speech development. I'd like to give you one too. <laughs> and also a middle child who just wasn't doing as he was told. Nicole and Nate worked extremely hard. And look what we've seen in a short space of time. It's been no picnic, has it? But look at the results. Right. Let's face it. I can see that it's going to work out, and we're going to do it and have the life that we want to have as a family. When you're not frustrated, we see a whole different Nate. I'm definitely not the dad that dreads coming home from work anymore. I'm, you know, the dad that's going to be looking forward to coming home. Is this a present for Jojo? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much thank for you. everything. Before thank Joe came, I was at the end of my rope. I didn't feel comfortable being really a mom at that point. Good night. Thank you very much. Take care, mate. Joe's given us so much, and it's almost like a piece of your family's leaving. Boys! Say bye! Bye-bye! Thank you, Joe, for helping us. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Aw. I miss you, Jojo. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. I love you, Jojo.